Disney owned Miley Cyrus, literally. They owned her name. From 2006 to 2011, we all witnessed what could be considered the greatest Disney Channel show of all time. Most of us look back on the show as nostalgic, fun, and overall positive. However, Miley does not have the same feelings. She was the lowest paid cast member. She was working 12 hour shifts and was dealing with an identity crisis all throughout her teenage years. We've seen a number of child stars spiral out of control and it seems like Miley was heading that way in the early 2010s. Or maybe her wild phase was all planned. Disney had an insane amount of power and control over the young girl. Instead of rolling over and dying, Miley decided she was going to fight the conglomeration. She was going to take back what was rightfully hers and make Disney want nothing to do with her. Stay hydrated. Miley's birth name was actually Destiny Hope Cyrus. Her parents would call her Smiley growing up, which ultimately got shortened to Miley. Throughout the 90s and early 2000s, her father toured the world singing his country music anthems. In 2001, he landed his own TV drama and family show called Doc. Miley was nine at the time and realized her new passion was acting. She made her acting debut as Kylie on Doc, and was instantly hooked. She had another small role as Ruthie in the film Big Fish, but when the opportunity for Hannah Montana presented itself, Miley was fixated on landing that role. Hannah Montana was a new Disney Channel show about a teenage girl who lived a double life as a famous pop star. Michael Poirier was the writer and producer for Hannah Montana. He had the show idea years before it ever came to TV. They had seen over 1,000 kids audition for the roles and still could not decide who was right for it. Miley's first audition was when she was 11 years old in 2002. She auditioned for the role of the best friend, but then was encouraged to go for the lead since she was a very talented singer, so she sent in another audition, and another. Ultimately, the show producers knew that they had to see her in person if they wanted to make a decision. She flew in and killed it. Her raspy voice, confidence, and true southern twang was exactly what Disney needed. Miley didn't just embody the character they wrote, she was her. Miley was a small town girl from Tennessee who went to school and had a big family. Her dad was a famous musician, and she was a very talented singer. She had always dreamed of being like her dad to some degree, but always loved her friends and life in the country. She fit the role so well they even casted her father Billy to play as her dad on the show, as they had a father-daughter bond so real it could not be recreated. They actually changed the lead character's name from Chloe Stewart to Miley Stewart because they couldn't separate the character from the real person. The show aired in March 2006 to 5.4 million viewers, the highest TV show premiere in Disney history at this point. Then they would average about 3.5 million viewers per episode every week. It was the most popular kids show on TV. She immediately became a megastar, both literally and on the show. Miley was living her biggest dreams. She was on Disney, her parents were happy, and everything was sunshine and rainbows. However, there was a lot of new pressure. Miley went from being an aspiring actress to 12-hour workdays, recording studios, live performances, and doing her schooling on set. Miley probably had a hard time trying to balance schoolwork and acting. If she had Grammarly, her workflow would have been way more efficient. Grammarly is an all-in-one writing tool that improves productivity and saves time when you have multiple assignments to complete. It is free to download and it works where you work, such as Google Docs to help you save time and work more efficiently. But upgrading Grammarly Premium will save you even more time with their advanced features that suggest different words to use, point out unclear sentences, and fix up your writing to make it more compelling. Succeed on your finals by using Grammarly's free synonym feature to replace overused words, which is very helpful to me because I find myself being very repetitive. Grammarly Premium's plagiarism detector will also save you time finding citations, getting your work done quicker. Plus, it's hard to juggle all of your assignments during final season especially with all your different classes. Get the right message across, especially during crunch time, with Grammarly's free setting goal feature to ensure you're writing to the correct audience. I put a lot of research in my videos and spend multiple days scripting them. I have to make sure every sentence is perfect so you don't get bored and click off the video. Grammarly's features not only make me sound more professional, but they save me at least three to four hours of work time. With midterms and assignments piling up, succeed in school with tools like Grammarly. It's free, why not? Go to grammarly.com slash patrickcc to sign up for your free account. And if you'd like to get extra features, upgrade to Grammarly Premium for 20% off to save time and work more efficiently. She was living a double life on the show and in real life. You can imagine how hard this would be to process as a 13 year old. When she would put on the Hannah Montana wig, the response was way different. Where's Hannah? Fans would scream to her when they see her in real life. Like what? I'm Hannah. Wait, no, I'm Miley. But they don't care about me as much. But when I throw on the wig, they love me. Miley's mother, Tish, who was her manager, didn't realize how quickly a mega corporation like Disney could take advantage of a child. They didn't even negotiate her salary, which is rumored to be about 15,000 per episode. Apparently, this was lower than some of her co-stars. They kind of just went with the motions. Billy Ray had a resurgence in fame. He was doing shows and selling albums. Miley was getting her little paychecks, so everything seemed to be good. But at some point, they realized they were getting way less than what they were legally entitled to. And Miley said her mother, quote, hired smart people to protect me in that way. 
In a 2016 interview with Elle, Miley said, I didn't know any better. My name was Miley on the show, but I didn't own my name. We didn't think about that. January of 2008, Destiny Hope Cyrus legally changed her name to Miley Ray Cyrus. When it was reported, she just said Miley was the name she identified with since a very young age. Plus being known as Miley to the world because of her show, it only made sense. While those things are definitely true, the little hint, we didn't think about that, made me want to go deeper and speculate further. I think there might be a deeper and maybe more complicated reason why Miley changed her name. Nobody knew Hannah Montana would be an overnight sensation, but they were aware of the potential it had. I'm talking commercial potential. Money, baby. And remember, they spent years going through thousands of auditions to get the right person, just in case it took off. In my Disney Pop Star Factory video, I highlighted the machine that Disney built with Lizzie McGuire, the Cheetah Girls, Hannah Montana, and others. They had a very calculated and efficient approach to hiring talent, casting them for a show, then releasing soundtracks and original music under their label Hollywood Records making millions in the TV game and the music industry. Lizzie and the Cheetah Girls were kind of like trial runs. They were successful, but nothing like Hannah Montana would become. The show premiered to millions of viewers every week. The very first Hannah Montana album released in 2006 and would go three times platinum. And I don't believe Miley received any payment for this album. And if so, very minor. The certification isn't even credited to her. It says various artists. It was also released under Walt Disney Records, which is basically their label for soundtracks, compilations, and remix albums. Whereas Hollywood Records is their label for real albums, not just TV or movie related albums. On top of that, merch was definitely flying off the shelves. T-shirts, dolls, phones, pencils, purses, posters, keychains. They were selling everything. Most of that was Hannah Montana stuff, which is the character that Disney did rightfully own and create. So it would make sense if Miley wasn't being paid royalties. However, in 2007, during season two, things got a little interesting. June 2007, Hannah Montana 2 album released, but it also had a second disc called Meet Miley Cyrus. This album went number one on the Billboard Hot 200 and would go on to sell three million copies, which was accompanied with a 70 show tour almost three and a half months straight of shows. All of these were 10 to 15,000 person stadiums selling out within minutes. The tour grossed $70 million. She would perform half as Hannah Montana and half as Miley. While she was definitely getting a performance fee, which I would say was anywhere from 10 to 30,000 per show, which would end up being around one to 1.5 million for the tour. Sounds like great money, but her name is on the tour. She most definitely could have owned a percentage of the whole thing with the right negotiations, making at least 10 to 20 million, but she did not own her name. People called her Miley Cyrus, but technically that was a stage name. January 2008 was the end of the Best of Both Worlds tour, and aside from the Hannah Montana movie, this was actually the last time she would ever perform as the Hannah Montana character. The beginning of 2008 was when Destiny Hope was legally changed to Miley Cyrus. My guess is that these smart people that Tish hired were advising her to legally change her name as a contractual loophole. Now you can't just get out of a contract by changing your name. If that was the case, everyone who had a mortgage in America would be changing their names and poof, no more house debt. However, Miley has been working like a dog at this point for almost two years, selling out stadiums all over the world. Truthfully, this should be enough money to set her up for life, but I don't think they had it. So changing her name might allow her to sign new contracts and renegotiate better terms. For example, in 1993, Prince legally changed his name from Prince, which was his birth name, to an unpronounceable symbol. Why? Warner Bros. took the name, trademarked it, and used it as the main marketing tool to promote all of the music I wrote. Doesn't that kind of sound like what Disney was doing with the name Miley Cyrus? Now I'm summarizing this a lot, but basically everything that Prince records and creates is technically owned by Warner Brothers while under the contract. So by changing his name to the symbol, he can record new material all in his home by himself and Warner doesn't own it since it wasn't made by Prince, it was made by the symbol. So maybe Destiny Hope signed some sort of contract with Walt Disney Records while recording and releasing the Hannah Montana albums, but when she legally changed her name to Miley Cyrus, maybe that allowed her to sign a new contract with Hollywood Records and release her new album Breakout under the stage name Miley Cyrus. But it wasn't just all business. Miley started resenting the character a lot. Really, Hannah Montana was not a character. That wasn't what the show is about. It was about a normal girl with a wig on. Everything was always in me. The concept of the show. It's me. Hannah was just Miley with a wig on. Take off the wig and you have the exact same person. Her identity as an artist and a person was being thwarted by a f***ing wig. She wanted to break away from Hannah Montana. Breakout, released July of 2008, was successful. It went platinum in just a few months. Just before the album, she got into some controversy for this topless photo shoot with Vanity Fair. Miley and her family felt like it was just artistic, but she was pressured to apologize for the provocative photo. 
Also around this time, photos leaked of her and her boyfriend at the time kissing and cuddling. Disney was not happy. All of their stars kept a squeaky clean image, so Miley was towing the line. She spent almost all of 2008 filming the 30 episode season three of Hannah Montana and working on new music. In 2009, she released Party in the USA, which would eventually go on to sell 10 million records. This is still her biggest song of all time. She performed the single at the Teen Choice Awards, which stirred up controversy for her pole dance, which was pretty mild. Still, Disney was getting more and more fed up with her. Now the 16 turning 17 year old was about to embark on the Wonder World Tour, where she didn't perform as Hannah Montana at all. The tour was 56 shows long. The smallest venue was 10,000 people. The biggest was 20,000 people. The O2 Arena in London, which she sold out five nights in one month which kind of made me take a step back and realize just how massive she was at age 16 and 17. She sold over 800,000 tickets on this tour, and the tour grossed $66 million, so it's pretty safe to say that Miley Cyrus could stand on her own without Hannah Montana. I'm also assuming that she made way more money on the Miley tour due to the legal name change. Think about it. She did 70 shows on the Hannah Montana Best of Both Worlds tour. That grossed 70 million. And she did another 56 shows as Miley after filming a whole new season of the show. That's an insane amount of work and pressure for a teenager. Maybe the Miley tour they had some ownership in and stood to make a lot more money. Maybe they were trying to gain leverage and show how Miley didn't need to be Hannah Montana anymore. Because as much as we don't want to accept it, she didn't want to be this character anymore. Maybe her parents just said, hey, let's just do this one tour and we could be done for a while. The 2010 release of Hannah Montana season four got pushed back. They said she was busy touring, but we all know she was full blown fed up with this character she had been playing since she was 12. In the middle of 2010, she released her album Can't Be Tamed with Hollywood Records, which the album name alone speaks for itself. The music video for the single stirred up controversy again as she was underage acting scandalous, which is mild by today's standards. At this point, she is publicly admitting she is done with the character and wants to move on, even though Hannah Montana season four is still not even released yet. So that's not, you know, completely over for my fans, but I'm kind of moving on yeah. new things. But Can't Be Tamed was a commercial failure compared to everything she had done before. The record still isn't gold, and the critical reception was poor. She didn't even do a North American tour for this album. My guess is at this point, Hollywood Records may have told her, see, you do need Hannah Montana. Maybe her going out publicly saying that she was ready to move on was making her fans resent her, but she wasn't able to get new fans because they still looked at her as the Disney girl. She was stuck in the middle. A couple weeks after she turned 18, a video of her leaked while smoking salvia out of a bong. Disney was livid about this. Miley smoked weed as a teenager, even during her time on the show, but she obviously hid this. She even had a massive clothing brand deal with Walmart in the works. Once the news came out about the bong, they cut all ties with her. Her live performance were starting to become provocative, which again by today's standards are actually very mild. She started admitting the realities of being a child star. You know, there's times that you hear what you should be so much that you lose like what you actually are. Miley had been media trained to answer questions in a specific way, to think a certain way so she could be more marketable and relatable. Every time she had a thought, she thought about Disney and how they would feel about her response. Do you ever swear? No. <laughs> you stub your toe, what do you say? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Disney owned her mind, her thoughts for years. 2011 was the first year she didn't work at Disney. It was her first real break, but with reruns and the show being so massive, it never really escapes you. Everywhere she goes, that's what people want to talk about. That's still what she is known for. She cuts her hair. A simple haircut and people all jump the gun. She's going crazy. She's just like every other child star. She broke up with her fiance, Liam Hemsworth. She dropped the We Can't Stop music video where she was twerking and being risque. The media was in a frenzy. Then the 2013 VMAs performance. Miley wanted to make history and that's exactly what she did. Going into it, most people thought, Oh, Miley Cyrus, the Disney girl. When she came out, they were shocked. The twerking on Robin Thicke would be the viral moment that caused most of the outrage. This is so embarrassing. Little did they know, Miley was calculated on this the whole time. She wasn't going crazy. She wasn't trying to put on an artistic display of emotion. She was trying to fuck shit up and get everyone in the world talking about her music, and that's exactly what happened. Every single celebrity chimed in, calling her a stripper, hooker, trashy. So she went the artistic route and dropped the Wrecking Ball music video. And of course, people didn't look at that as artistic. They thought, wow, she's really doing whatever she can for attention. Then again at the EMAs where she lit a joint on stage, collaborating with Juicy J and Mike Will Made It and a ton of other rappers. No matter what she did, people pinpointed her as the Disney star gone trashy and try hard. 
but if you watch any interview or listen to her talk at this point, it was all highly calculated, self-aware, and conscious. I'm changing and learning so much, I think especially now that I feel like I found more of my independence. I don't think I was ever really happy with who I was. Sure, she liked to party and go wild, but understood the media game was just try to keep them talking while she keeps collecting the money. Because her album went three times platinum, We Can't Stop five times platinum. The Wrecking Ball video has 1.5 billion views and went seven times platinum. And here we are talking about all of this almost 10 years later. Her parents didn't want her to go wild. Disney didn't want her to go wild. And because of it, Disney did everything they could to disassociate with her. Did she do it for business reasons? Or did she do it to escape the child star stigma? Because her wild phase calmed down immensely after 2013. She went back to normal pretty quickly, making country songs and pop songs that didn't rely on her being naked to sell. And if she didn't have her wild phase, we would still be thinking of her as the girl who couldn't survive without the help of the Disney conglomeration.